one place over back there. Yeah. They crossed. They were all coming from that direction and cutting up right through there. Hmm. And we thought they would kind of J-hook around, but they're crossing right through there. Like they, there's nothing on this trail and nothing's coming this way. They're all bedded up or moving from, coming from that valley and cutting right in front of that tree, right at the base of that hill. Interesting, so nothing is coming up from mm -hmm. this way. They're almost like, like we always say, they're hooking the staying down ridge of their food sources and just meandering down ridge. And when they get hungry, they're just gonna pop up, eat and come right back down. Fascinating. So hard to hunt. Like I've already felt the wind like hit me in the face, hit me in the neck. Like it's just, these like straight up from here. Perfect for the deer. Yeah, it's like, they thrive in this area. Efforts are paying off. Dude, efforts are paying off. And like, we run a lot of trail cameras out here. And he's not gone to a single feeder, corn, mineral lake, or anything. That's awesome, man. <laughs> yep. Look at that stank face. <laughs> that sucks. But that was pretty sick with the turkeys. So, pulled the cards. We picked up a big eight pointer. For us, I think it was successful in it that one, one, we discovered a deer we've not seen or tracked, and that's what I wanted to do. Um, and he literally crossed one area, did not walk, kind of walked down the road, but didn't even walk down the road. Um, and so we have a 50 yard range where I think he's crossing through there. I think we put the camera back up there, leave that there and just start sequencing uh, what he's doing from there. I think we make a mock scrape in that area and uh, put the camera over that and let it, let it ride. Um, but it's a tough area like we deduce like it's easy to say like they're moving from that ridge to that ridge and that one little bottom area at least he is um, a lot more activity uh, right at the nexus of all those trails but it's also the low point um, and so now we know where he's crossing so the, the only the next step from here is to put a game plan on him he's a big eight pointer old too big body uh, I think is to put a mock straight up, put a camera over it, and then hope that he starts hitting it and uh, maintain that. 
So that's why we're gonna make use of a bunch of hemp rope and use that and hopefully we can get some routine and get them patterned because I would definitely put the whack on that deer. I, this is glancing through briefly in this hot, it's so dang hot down here, humid area. Briefly scanning through, but like I would say it's like a 140, 150 class eight pointer. Uh, so yeah, successful. Still not finding the deer I was hoping to find, which is a little, I don't know. But so the next step from here is uh, mock scrapes. I think that's the only other way Again, like this did prove, it validates that yes, you can pick up deer that you've not traditionally seen. This guy's never hit food sources other than native browse. He's not going to feeders, he's not going to corn, not going to mineral licks. Maybe he'll hit a saw, a mock scrape. We shall see. Uh, if he doesn't hit the mock scrape, some deer just aren't meant to be killed by hunters, I feel like. <laughs> But yeah, and so that's the next step. But we're gonna put more mock scrapes out because that's another avenue, another strategy in our toolbox that we can use to find and locate deer that are just off the grid and don't want to be bothered. But mock scrapes are the social scene, it's the town hall, it's the Twitter, it's the X, whatever you want to call it, of deer world. And so we're gonna create some, put cameras over them to see if we can get a game plan and pick up some more deer. Boom. Off we go, Gabriel, to Never Ever Land. What's up bros? So we are here in Tennessee. And so again, we did our one trail survey, Call of Duty, Warfare, Breakdown, Grid, trail camera, kill zone. Trying to figure out what's moving through there. We got one buck on there that we've not seen. And that's awesome because like we run hundreds of trail cameras around here. And to find something new that's moving through here is that's so awesome, a mature eight pointer. Probably my favorite deer to hunt. And so um, another tactic that we're gonna be deploying now as we get earlier uh, and closer into the hunting season is mock scrapes. This is another way to find and locate deer that are not hitting food sources that you can traditionally put cameras over. So they're not just not going to corn uh, or they are not going to feeders uh, or they're not hitting your uh, rock salt or any of your mineral salt licks. And so this is another way. And so we are running, I don't even know what this is. I've never even heard of this brand before, uh, but I've had a bunch of people say that this is awesome. I'm sure we could have probably saved money and gone to Lowe's and gotten some 100% hemp rope, because that's basically what we're going for is using hemp rope. That's the what I've heard and people have told me is really legit. And so we're running the hemp rope here. I probably could have gone to Lowe's and gotten cheaper. Uh, but I was nervous that Lowe's had like some sort of chemical treatment, something. And so I'm like, all right, we're gonna do this. Let's do it right. You get it once, you get it right. And so we're gonna go and try Hodag. I don't even know how you pronounce that. But uh, it's the hemp rope that is key. Uh, I am tr going to try their scent, but mainly I am using, and man, this is so stinky. Uh, this I've been using for a while. I've had a bunch of people recommend this to me. I don't know anything about this company. I don't know who they are, but I've randomly had a bunch of people tell me. So we're using Rat Gitter, their pre-orbital scent gel. And it's like beard balm. Uh, and I highly recommend you put it in your beard during the rut. Uh, no, don't do that, that's a horrible idea. Uh, but anyway, so the setup is hemp rope, 100% hemp rope. We're tying it off into tree lines, edge lines. So bucks love to hit edge lines. Like this is a tiny little 
long, I think it's like 900 yards long field that says the widest part's probably 15 yards. Perfect edge, ridge top, valley, creeks on both sides, power line down there. So it's just a really awesome travel corridor. Nice edge for bucks to cruise. They're gonna line this up with scrapes. And so we're gonna hit this one. We've already gotten this set up. And so this stuff ain't cheap. And so I'm trying to conserve as much of the hemp rope since that's the theory as to what is uh, what is ideal. And so I'm using paracord to tie off at the top of the tree, tied off to the hemp rope. And then now we're gonna rub this all down in gel. I'm gonna put some rubber gloves on to minimize my scent on it. I'm gonna de-thread it so it becomes more uh, frayed out. So I'm gonna untwine the 100% hemp rope, douse that in some scent, scrape it off. Uh, and if I had to go to the bathroom, I'd pee on it. Um, it's totally cool to do that. Like people seem to think like human pee is gonna like disturb them. After 10 minutes, all the human scent of that pee evaporates. Uh, and so it just becomes a territory marking. And it's like, my dogs pee over my scent thinking that, that another person, big dominant dogs in the area. So they see, they see me pee and all of a sudden they're like a dominant dogs in the area. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. That's the layup, that's the setup. We are gonna use one of these tripods overlooking it because there's not a tree that's really ideal and we can get the perfect setup, get the right light so that we're not getting sunned out on this one. We're gonna shoot it back and uh, yeah, we're gonna get some awesome footage and we're gonna probably put it in video mode to see what we can get on this setup. I don't know, man, this is pretty exciting. Season's around the corner and this is what it's all about, man. Getting set up, getting your game plan for the hunting season.